in this section we are going to talk about modulation. Modulation is a process of mixing a signal with a sinusoid to produce a new signal. As we mentioned, we can send our data which has a low frequency. So first we have to increase the frequency. In other words, we have to do frequency shift. And this is the purpose of our modulation. And we said that the modulated signal has advantages comparing to the low frequency data signal. And we know that it's immune to noise, it's more efficient, and if we have a high frequency signal, we will be able to decrease the size of our antenna. The sinusoidal signal that's used in a modulation is known as a carrier signal, or simply the carrier. The carrier has a high frequency, as we talked before. The signal that is used in modulating the carrier signal is known as a data signal, or the message signal. So, we have two kinds of signals. The first one is a carrier which has high frequency, the second one is our data signal, which has low frequency, and we want to do modulation using these two signals. We have two kinds of modulation, analog and digital, and these two is divided into different types. Analog modulation is, we can say, we can have a amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, phase modulation, for digital, we can have amplitude shift king, which is similar to amplitude modulation, frequency shift king, and phase shift king. We start with amplitude modulation. In amplitude modulation, or AM, the carrier signal has its amplitude modulated in proportional to the message bearing, or data signal. So, how does this happen? Imagine that we have a carrier, free carrier signal which has a constant amplitude. So this is like a normal sine wave, but we want to make amplitude modulated signal out of this signal. What we should do? We can multiply our carrier by a signal which has our data inside it, as you see. So now, our amplitude is changing, and this is the amplitude of our carrier, carrier. So this is the new amplitude, let's say A. So our carrier is a signal with a fixed frequency, but it has an amplitude which is changing. And this change is proportional to our data or message bearing signal. And in other words, we can say that our data is buried inside the amplitude of our carrier and this is called amplitude modulation so as a summary in ap amplitude modulation we want to produce a wave or a signal which has the same frequency as a carrier but the amplitude is changing and this change is proportional to the data how can we produce such a signal we say that we have our data signal imagine that it's a sign wave so it's omega m t plus phi m this omega m is a low frequency we have our gain like amplitude sorry for our uh, data and we have a dc value now we use mixer and we produce a carrier which has the amplitude ac sine omega ct plus phi c phase of our carrier and this is the frequency which is high if we multiply these two signals we will be able to produce am signal as you see here we multiply our data signal with offset actually with our carrier let's take a look at the signals as you see in the left side, the first one is our information signal, which has low frequency. And this is omega m, as we talked before. The second one is our carrier signal, which has a high frequency, and it's omega c. So as you see here, if we multiply these two signals using a mixer, as you see in this picture, we can make an am signal, and this is am signal. As you see, am signal has a constant frequency 
but its amplitude changing all the time and this change is proportional to our information signal as you see this is kind of change here so you can basically see that we have our data here so this uh, waves are similar to each other let's take a look at the frequency spectrum for now we are trying to summarize this but we will explain it in details in uh, upcoming sections so you don't have to worry about the formula and everything just for for now just know about the concept so imagine that we have a message signal it's a cosine wave and it has low frequency so we can show in the frequency domain this is a delta and it has a low, low frequency fm and we have a high signal carrier here if we take a look at to the uh, spectrum of the modulated signal it has three components if you remember we said that we need to produce a high frequency and we want to check to see if uh, we did right or not we have three kind of frequencies fc fc minus fm FC plus FM. You can imagine uh, the modulated signal is a, a sum of three cosine waves. So they have imagine that we have three cosine waves and we combine them together, but these co three cosine waves have three different frequencies. But in in total, we have a high frequency as you see here. So this is high frequency. This is high frequency. Why? Because FM is really you know, it's small comparing to FC. So this is equal to more or less FC, and this is two. This is a bit a bit is higher than FC, and this is a bit lower than FC. So these three are high frequency. So we are succeeded. Now we are able to actually we we produce a signal which has a high frequency. And what about the data? We said that in modulation we want to keep our data, and we say yes if you follow this part see the peak it's exactly like the low frequency uh, wave as you see here so here we also have our data so we produce the wave which has a high frequency and which has our data which is called a modulation here what about the frequency modulation we can define the fm wave produced when we modulate a carrier frequency with modulating signal here the difference is that we have a constant amplitude amplitude is AC but now our frequency is changing imagine that if we don't want to do frequency modulation so we have a carrier with a fixed frequency but in frequency modulation we are producing a wave which has a frequency and this frequency is changing for example a carrier has a 1 gigahertz frequency but the frequency modulator signal frequency changes it goes to 1.5 it it goes down to 0 0.9 so like this it changes so as you see here again how this change happens the change of frequency is again proportional to our data so let's say uh, that our frequency changes it has a fixed frequency offset and plus this so omega c is changing proportional to our data and this is our data signal again here as you see here this is a, a frequency uh, modulation this is our data and this is our carrier for example see that the amplitude of our data is high in this point so we have high frequency as you see but now our signal is decreasing so the frequency decreases so if we say f2 f1 f2 part is higher than f1 because the amplitude of our signal is higher in f2 part here and how can we make this kind of thing how can we make a system that it uh, produces a frequency modulated signal is simple it's vco if you remember in vco we said that we have a frequency which is equal to a offset frequency plus a gain and the voltage so basically we can use our uh, mo uh, our data signal as th this voltage as this control voltage this is a control so this can be our data and we can control the frequency so if we use VCO and uh, we use the uh, modulated signal we use the data signal as our V control we can produce a FM modulated signal here 
this is FM modulated signal. So basically here we don't kind of we don't need a carrier actually. Uh, your VCO is you know start oscillating with the proportional to the voltage. And let's go to the uh, spectrum of this. We talked about the spectrum of amplitude modulated signal. As you see here, we have three components. But uh, we have to know for frequency or phase modulated signal, we have uh, more components comparing to this one. But there is only one case, which we will talk about it later. Again, you don't have to worry. Just remember for now, we have a narrow band FM. In narrow band FM, we have this feature. Our gain this KF and AM, when we divide it by omega m, it should be really uh, less than 1. So basically we can say that our omega m is a bit high, higher than KF times AM. This is a, if we have this kind of option, if we have this kind of feature, then we call it narrowband FM, and uh, in this case our uh, spectrum is uh, you know, we get the spectrum similar to our uh, actually amplitude modulated signal. So we have again three spectrums here, kind of. But generally, for frequency modulated signal, we have uh, more components. We will talk about it later. The last one is a phase modulation for analog modulation, actually. Phase modulation is a process of modulating the phase of the carrier. Now, imagine that our uh, amplitude is constant and, fa uh, and uh, uh, frequency is constant. Now we want to change our phase. Here again we have our data here. So our, ch our phase is changing proportional to our data. But you have to uh, remember that uh, the phase modulation and frequency modulation, they're like brothers and they're related to each other. As you see here, for example, uh, the frequency is low, so we have a low phase, and it goes high, so phase increases. So again, it looks like a you know a phase frequency modulation because again our phase frequency changes. We can say when our phase changes, as we talked in PLL, when our phase difference changes, our frequency changes as well. So phase uh, modulation is a kind of frequency modulation. The difference here, if you want to uh, produce it, we have to take a derivative and give it to the VCO, which we will talk about it later again. You don't have to worry about it. Just for now, know that in the uh, phase modulation, we are trying to uh, modulate our phase. Now our phase is changing proportional to our data. Thank you for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe. You can learn about this topic and more using our website. The complete course on this topic is provided on our website at www.rasoft.com. Rasoft is providing a complete certificate on radio frequency. The RF basic concepts and fundamentals course is provided free at our website. The courses are complete step-by-step -step approach with quiz and examples and certificate of completion will be provided upon finishing each course. By taking the required courses in RF system and IC design with pass status, RASAF would provide the RASAF radio frequency certificate. The topics are chosen with advice from RF engineers in top industry companies like Apple, Qualcomm, Broadcom and Skyworks who are missing candidates with these skills.